Good afternoon from Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. We're here today because Disney has made up their own holiday for February 13th, which is today, and they call it Valentine's Day. I know for a fact that they have some sweet treats over the Contemporary Resort that we're gonna be trying later, but right now we're at Magic Kingdom to see if we can get kind of some updates on Tron, look around Magic Kingdom, see if there's anything for Valentine's Day. I don't know if there is, but we'll have a look and find out, and then we'll go over to Contemporary and try a bunch of sweet treats. Let's go inside. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Well, I checked the times guide. Didn't have anything in there for this special day. And I also checked the guide maps, nothing in there. Let's go around and see what we can find. I don't know if we'll find anything. We'll definitely get to have a look at the Tron construction though. Well, City Hall is still behind Scrim, so I don't know what they're doing to it. I'm sure it's just a paint job, but nothing else here on Main Street is behind Scrim. It's a perfect day. Nice and breezy, not too hot, not too cold. It is 86 degrees outside. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Well, I said it was a perfect day, but admittedly, after being out in the sun for a little bit, it is pretty hot out here. I'm gonna pop into the Emporium really quick and just have a real quick look around at some merch. Maybe there's new stuff, you never know. There's this ink and paint collection, which is pretty neat. It's like a puzzle that you put together a Pinocchio and then you can paint him for $24.99. And there's another one of Dumbo down here. Let's see if they have a, dish or a picture of the finished product. Oh, that's adorable. These are really fun. This is a hat that comes with markers so that you can draw on the hat or maybe get the characters to sign it. It's $27.99 for the hat. For $64.99, we've got this hoodie with the castle kind of half painted on it and half blueprint. That's pretty neat. I like it. This is a neat collection. Got a throw here for $39.99 couple of bags. So this one down here is $39.99 and this drawstring one is $24.99. The backpack is $29.99. This is nice. It's a very like cushy backpack just like a like a Jansport that you would get for school or something like that. We've got all these different ink and paint pins. So you've got a four-piece pin collection for $27.99. We've got Mary Poppins here, yellow. I'm assuming that all of these are yellow. Yeah, okay, so yellow is $12.99. So they've got all of these individual pins for $12.99. I like that Mary Poppins one. And they have an Alice in Wonderland one too. A super colorful napkin set for $34.99. These are neat. I like this entire collection. For $24.99, they have an ink and paint art set Comes with a bunch of stuff, all kinds of markers and crayons and stencils and pencils and scissors and stickers. For $36.99, we've got this Fantasia shirt that's part of the ink and paint collection. You can see all the different levels of drawing. You got sketch, cleanup, ink, and then paint. They have all kinds of Valentine's Day stuff. No Valentine's Day stuff, but Valentine's Day stuff. The Best Girlfriend Award. Here's the ink and paint spirit jersey. This one's awesome. Uh, I always forget how much spirit jerseys are and they never have a price on them. They always rip it off on the bottom so that they can change it. This one's $54.99. This one's just a regular kind of like a light sweater. This one's awesome looking. There's no colors on it. It's just gray with sketches and the ink, but it's good. I like it. They still have some of the Space Mountain Minnie Mouses, but the 15th, this Saturday, they start the Pirates of the Caribbean line of the Minnie Mouse, the main attraction line. They totally rearranged the entire Emporium and all of the ear headbands are way over here now. So I had no idea where they were, but I'm looking for the ink and paint ear headband. So I asked about the ink and paint ears and they said they should be back here with the rest of the collection. I haven't found them yet. By the way, the ears used to be over there. This is now pet things like uh, dog spirit jerseys and things like that. One thing I didn't find before was this. And I always thought that this was neat. And I was gonna get one for Jackson if they had Pluto, but I think they only have Mickey. And this is a plush that comes with pens or markers so that you can have the characters sign your plush. And this is $39.99. It's a pretty neat concept. And they have leggings here for $24.99. These are little kids leggings, it looks like. And then for $24.99, they have the shirt that goes with the leggings. This is a very soft, stretchy material. What's this? Oh, there's a plush inside of this. Sorcerer's Mickey plush. Oh, it's like a blind though. You never know what color you're gonna get. Well, that's interesting. All right, I came searching for the ears. A cast member went looking for them for me. 
Couldn't find them. I guess they're all sold out. All right, let's get over to the people mover and have a look and see if we can see some Tron construction. All right, let's head into Tomorrowland. Get on the Tomorrowland Transit Authority people mover and you can see they are still doing a lot of work on it over here. Trying to change the structural supports here that hold up the roof. So they're trying to change it from this design here to what they have across the way over here. A little bit more retro looking like that. There it is, the perfect example. There is one that they just finished putting the stucco on and here's one with the wire lath ready for stucco. Oh, it is busy in the Magic Kingdom today. Wonder how long the wait is for the people mover. Oh, it doesn't look too intensely busy. It does look slightly busy though. All right, we made it on the people mover. It has been taking kind of a little bit longer to get on the people mover recently, but we did it. We should get a pretty good idea of how busy the Magic Kingdom is here. Come around the corner and looking at the castle and looking into the hub. Uh, not too bad down there. It feels a lot busier than it is though. All right, here it is, the Tron construction. A big pile of dirt. Also, look at that track. Look at that beautiful, beautiful track. And this, what looks to be a dive coming out of the building there. Yeah, that looks awesome. Holy cow. It is moving right along for sure. They've already started enclosing the building. Almost done. It's so beautiful. I wanted to take a quick stop into Star Traders and see if they have any the ink and paint stuff. Maybe they got the ears in here. There they are, the ink and paint ears. They're pretty nice. And these are $30 like all the other ears. Here's something that hasn't been open for a while now is this little walkway to the right of the castle because they've been taking the lights off of the castle and there's been a crane in the way. So they moved the crane, the lights are all done. So now this pathway is back open. So there it is, no more lights on the castle. As you can see, it's a bear castle now. All of the Christmas stream lights are gone. And the crane that was here is gone. Here's something that I feel like we haven't shown in a while. But back here behind the castle, like the castle's right behind me right now. And I'm looking straight at Prince Charming's carousel. And over here on the right is Sir Mickey's. I want to show you guys the inside of Sir Mickey's because I think it's a really neat shop. Look, there's a giant lifting up the roof and peeking inside. I always thought that that was neat because this is more theming than I feel like is in any other gift shop in Magic Kingdom. And there's a beanstalk coming in and Mickey is standing on top of it. All right, I think it's getting a little bit too crowded inside of Magic Kingdom for me. So I think now it's time to head out and head over to Contemporary for Valentine's Day. Here's another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys. If you guys see, there's a sign over there for Bibbidi Bobby Boutique. This is where you go first to check in and you pick out your dresses and accessories here. And then once you have all that, they get you dressed over there and they escort you here into Cinderella Castle. And just over here on the right, there is another doorway and that's where they go to get their hair and makeup done inside of this door right here. But right now we're going through the center of Cinderella Castle. And it's interesting because there's a gate out there that isn't normally closed. Normally you can see out onto Main Street, but right now it's closed. And this is part of the Royal Friendship Fair set. It's closed right now. We can still go around it though and just see onto the stage here. Almost three o'clock too, almost time for the Festival of Fantasy Parade. Oh look, there's a guy doing some work on the stage up there. That's probably why those gates are closed. Here's something else that I don't think that I notice very often is off to the side of the stage over here, there's a sign that tells you what time Royal Friendship Fair is the day that you're here at Magic Kingdom. Well, they're doing, they're doing some sort of filming production over here. You see all these umbrellas up. And you can see there's a camera back underneath that umbrella right there. I wonder what they're filming for. I popped into the confectionery to try to avoid some of the crowd. Look at this, Valentine's Day Rice Krispie Treat. This thing is gigantic. It is $19.99. They have one without anything on it for $17.99. Wait, so I think that these are $17.99 and then I think these are $15.99. Very confusing. All right, Magic Kingdom, see you next time. We're headed off to the Contemporary. Which, uh, I can't wait to show you guys this walkway over to the Contemporary because it is ridiculous looking right now because of all the construction. So we're headed over to Contemporary. Oh, monorail! But we have to kind of go down this little secret path over here. Does not look like a place that we should be going. And the entire walk is kind of just like this where we're just kind of 
walking in between fences, making our way over to the contemporary. Places that we wouldn't have normally walked before the construction. I feel like I don't remember the walkway being this close to the bus stop, because those are the bus stops right there. So I'm just like feeling like this is a new pathway. Monorail! Because we used to be over there, yeah, we used to be over there by the bushes, and now we're not. You guys want to know what the underside of the monorail looks like? There it is. Oh, it's stopping right now. And now we're back out in a uh, temporary area. This is like the road. We're just like walking in the middle of the road. Or what used to be road. They reclaimed it as sidewalk. Monorail! How many monorails am I going to see going by here? A lot of them. And now we are finally connecting back up to the old walkway from the Magic Kingdom to the Contemporary. And there it is. Over here by Contemporary, behind Space Mountain, we can get a pretty good look at Tron back there. They don't have any of the panels on this section yet. I'm sure that'll be next. I don't I don't see any track in oh yeah, you can kind of see some track inside of there right there. There it is, a truly beautiful shot of the contemporary. There are all these themed buses going around Walt Disney World. There's one that's Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. When we first walk in, there's a display for Valentine's Day. February 13th. Disney's Contemporary Resort Bakery cast members have conjured up specialty villain-inspired sweet treats to celebrate Valentine's Day. That's where we're headed. Up to Contempo Cafe. So some of these things are examples of the treats that we're going to get. And then others like this cake here are just conglomerations of different villains. So you got Ursula, Cruella de Vil, and Maleficent. And then like these down here are what we can get. One that I'm most excited for Right here, this scar one, it's peanut butter. These are some more examples of the different treats that we're gonna get. Ooh, this one, I got this wrong last year. So we got Dr. Facilier up top, Scar. Then we got Sid from Toy Story, Hook, Gaston. Is there another one around the back? Ooh, what's the one on the back? I feel like, I feel like that's the Queen of Hearts. Here's a look at the menu for the different sweet treats that we can get. Should be a total of 10 of them. I'm gonna try to get all 10 of them. All right, let's head up to the fourth floor for Contempo Cafe. Fun fact about the contemporary, Ballroom of the Americas was where Nixon gave his famous I am not a crook speech, and that's right in there. Another fun fact, the third floor of the contemporary is fairly hard to get to. We did a whole tour of the contemporary resort, and we'll put a link to that in the description down below so you guys can see what's on the third floor of the Contemporary. Because right now, we're up on the fourth floor. We're going from the second floor to the fourth floor. Outside of BVG, which is the gift shop here at the Contemporary, they have a whole display for Valentine's Day. You can have them make up a Valentine's Day gift too. Well, this is fun too, what are these? Well, they're like little, wear them as like a bracelet maybe. Six piece bracelet set. They also have long stem roses for six dollars or carnations for three. And they have a little example of one of the gift bags that they could do. See, very romantic. Or they could also do like a nice flowery display. And then they have these Mickey and Minnie's right here that say love. How much are these? $39.99. As well as just some like simple stuff, like you could get this uh, Rice Krispie treat for, I don't know, some some price. Doesn't say anywhere. Oh, well, look at this photo frame, that's fun. And then also right here, Minnie's Sweetheart Bouquet, which is this here, $80. That's a hefty price for a flower arrangement. What is this? There's like a little, little Mickey Mouse inside of it. So our actual place that we want to end up is over here at Contempo Cafe. But first, I wanted to show you guys over here at the Outer Rim. Looks like they have some special Valentine's Day inspired cocktails. What do we got here? The Antagonist inspired by Jafar, which I believe is this one right here. We've got Poison Apple inspired by the Wicked Queen, which I think is that one right there. And then the last one is the Dark Forest inspired by Maleficent, which is this center one right here. Whoa, look at those. Now let's head over to Contempo Cafe and get an exorbitant amount of sweet treats. All right, well, this is absolute madness. 
if I've ever seen it. This is entirely too many sweet treats. I definitely do not think that I'm going to be able to finish all of these. I will be bringing some home to Jen 100%. But look at that, there they are. There is all 10 of the Valentine's Day treats at Contempo Cafe. Wow. So first we have a Cruella de Vil vanilla cupcake with cookies and cream filling, red vanilla buttercream, fondant cape, and green brooch. We've got a Hades cupcake, vanilla cupcake with pumpkin custard, blue buttercream, silver sugar, and white chocolate garnish. We've got the Gaston cupcake, caramel cupcake with dolce de leche filling, red and gold vanilla buttercream, a dark chocolate belt, and piped gold belt buckle. The Evil Queen Fruit Tart. Fruit tart with blackberries, blueberries, and white chocolate garnish. That actually sounds real good. Captain Hook Cake. Chocolate cake with blue and white vanilla buttercream, gummy fish, a dark chocolate plank, and a white chocolate garnish. The Scar Peanut Butter Pie. Peanut butter pie with cocoa powder claw marks and white chocolate garnish. There are the claw marks back there. The Ursula Confetti Cake. Vanilla cake with blueberry filling, purple vanilla buttercream, dark purple white chocolate glaze, black sprinkles, and white chocolate shell. That's a lot of stuff for this one dessert. The Maleficent flowerless cake with white chocolate purple glaze and dark chocolate horns sprayed with black cocoa butter. Well, that sounds really interesting. Dr. Facilier cookie sandwich Vanilla buttercream sandwich between two chocolate chip cookies and topped with a white chocolate garnish. And then the villain sugar cookie. Sugar cookie with black and lavender sprinkles. The most simple one. So like I said, I think I'm just gonna try a sample of each of these. I don't know how well I would do as far as sleeping goes, trying all of these. I'm just gonna try a little bit of each one and then take them home to Jen and we'll eat them later. But I'm gonna start simple with the sugar cookie. Nice simple sugar cookie just a sugar cookie with black and purple sprinkles on it really a little bit of a lemon flavor to it pretty good though yeah i like this that's a very flavorful sugar cookie hmm. we're, we're gonna get a little bit more complex here with this dr facilier sandwich because it's two chocolate chip cookies with icing in between but the chocolate chip cookies are very like moist and tender. I don't know if tender is the right word. How do you describe chocolate chip cookies that are soft? Soft, there you go, they're soft chocolate chip cookies. So this is basically like a whoopie pie with chocolate chip cookies. That's good. I mean, some of these things, it's like you can't go wrong with them, you know? It's just two chocolate chip cookies with some icing in the middle of it. I don't know what I'm gonna go with next. I think I'm gonna go with the scar thing because that's what I was most excited to try. Because I love peanut butter. And you guys know that after a while of eating um, like sweet treats, you kind of get to the point where it's like, all right, there's just too much sweets at this point. I can't handle it anymore. And something that might taste good first bite ends up tasting bad because you've just had too many sweets. So I'm gonna make sure that I get this one that I was most excited for in at the beginning of these tastings so that I don't think to myself like, oh, that was bad. There's just too much sweets. Kind of wish I had gotten some milk or something. Okay. That's very peanut buttery. It almost tasted like coffee because of the the chocolate dusting claw marks on it. So it's peanut butter on the top, but then on the bottom, it's like a custard, which I don't know how they would taste together. I'm gonna try that next. But right now, I like the peanut butter top. I don't know that I'm gonna like the peanut butter top with the custard on the bottom. Let's give it a try in one big bite. It still kind of tastes like coffee, which is strange to me. It shouldn't taste like coffee. It should taste like peanut butter, right? But it almost has a little bit of a coffee flavor to it. I don't really understand that. Very strange. I mean, I would eat it again, but I am kind of like thrown off a little bit by the flavor. It's good. Not as, not, not exactly what I was expecting though. All right, I think we're gonna try the Maleficent flourless cake next. 
This one seems interesting. It's like a flourless cake with white chocolate, purple glaze, and dark chocolate horns sprayed with black cocoa butter. So I'm guessing that this section back here, this black section is the cocoa butter. I'm really interested to try this. This looks super thick. I don't know if you guys can see on the inside here. It's like a fudge. I don't know, that was not, I didn't like the flavor of that at all. I don't even know how to describe that flavor. So if you've ever had like the cheaper chocolate, like not Hershey's, but like an off-brand chocolate, that's what this tasted like. You know how off-brand chocolate's just kind of like a little bit off? That's what this was. I, I would definitely not get that one again. All right, up next, we've got this Ursula confetti cake which is a uh, vanilla cake with blueberry filling, which sounds interesting. Whoa, that's a big old piece. All right, I've got my napkin ready because, wait, oh, I dropped it. I'm not sure how that's a confetti cake. It just looks like regular old white cake. Look at how little blueberry filling there is inside of there. Like I would imagine that there should be way more than that, but it's like just like one blueberry inside. I just didn't dig in far enough. I had to take another little layer off the top there. But now you can see there's a good amount of filling in there. Still, the icing definitely takes away from the flavor of this cake. And I'm not sure how this is a confetti cake. We're halfway there and I'm starting to feel it. And I've only had a few bites of everything, but it's, it's so much sugar, but up next, we got the Evil Queen Tart. This one sounds interesting because it seems like it'll be fresh. And one thing that I have had happen now is the the uh, scar tart underneath the peanut butter started kind of oozing out. So I had to use the little scar to hold it all in so that it wouldn't just ooze out everywhere. So I would still be able to take some home. And I have a feeling that same thing is going to happen with this tart. Okay. I think this will be good. It's not as oozy as the peanut butter tart. It's got some fresh fruit on it. It's actually like, instead of cream or like custard on the inside, it's like a, like a cake in there. This is good. And the pie crust is really good on the outside of the tart. Oh, every time a Monero comes in here, the napkins that I have start blowing everywhere. But the berries are fresh. The like pie crust is almost exactly like the flavor of a sugar cookie. So around Christmas time, my parents, my mom would make uh, pecan logs. That's sort of what this tastes like if you didn't have the pecans in it. Like whatever that is, it's delicious. This one is probably my favorite one so far. I mean, the cookies were good and the facilier thing was good, but this, this is really good. Let's have a look at the cross section of it. Like I said, not all oozy like the peanut butter one, a nice like, cake filling inside of it, fresh fruit, easy to eat, won't leave you feeling like the rest of these have already made me feel. All right, we're down to the last four, which also look like they are the most sugary of all of them. Okay, so I think that these last few, the cupcakes, are probably going to be very similar in flavor because they're just like, oh, I guess not because one of them is like pumpkin. This Hades one that I'm going to try next is pumpkin. Hades is a vanilla cupcake with pumpkin custard, blue buttercream, silver sugar, and white chocolate garnish. Where's the pumpkin in it? Oh, I found the pumpkin. It doesn't match Hades at all. Because what do they have to do with pumpkin? I don't know, but it's good. I, I'm not a huge fan of pumpkin. And the other thing that I like is that the entire top, although it's tall, is not all icing. You can see the cross section here. They've kind of built up the top of the cake with the inside of the cake, I guess. They like scooped it out. You can see there's the pumpkin cream inside of it. And then they put that in and then they put what was inside back on top and then coated it with icing. So it's not as sweet as you would imagine. It's still very sweet because there is just like sugar plastered on the outside of it. But this is good. I was not expecting to like the pumpkin cupcake because pumpkin's not entirely my flavor, but this is good. It tastes, the inside tastes just like a pumpkin pie. I wish I had brought some wet wipes or something because my hands are so sticky right now from all of the sugar, but we're on to the Gaston cupcake. What's the interesting thing about the Gaston? Caramel cupcake? Dolce de leche filling? Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, good. That's awesome. There's not as much fit. There's not as much icing on top of these because there's just like the inside of the cupcake on top and they add the filling in the middle there. Oh God. Wow. 
My goodness, that tastes like cotton candy. Why does it taste like cotton candy? There wasn't anything in the description about cotton candy, right? No. Okay, I think I figured it out. So if you look inside here, just underneath the red frosting, there's just like a layer, a layer of red sugar. And I think that that's the same red sugar that they use to make the cotton candy. Wow, and then there's the inside down there of the dulce de leche. That is a lot of sugar. I'm gonna try to dig in a little bit more. Although this one is probably one of my least favorite flavors. Yeah, this is a little bit of everything. No, this Gaston one is not good at all, in my opinion. All right, we got two more to do. Perla de Ville vanilla cupcake with cookies and cream filling. All right, let's, let's try it here. I think I got some of the cookies. Yeah, I got some cookies and cream in there. Yeah, okay, so cookies and cream is good. That darn red frosting. I wish I understood why red frosting tastes so bad. Any like bakers out there that know why red frosting is terrible? Leave us a comment down below. The rest of it is good. So far, I can say without a doubt that the uh, Scar peanut butter one was good. The uh, Evil Queen tart was good. Both the cookies were good. And then I feel like the uh, the Hades one was good too. That was the pumpkin one. I didn't expect to like that one. All right, let's try this this Captain Hook one. And, oh wait, I gotta show you guys the inside of this Cruella de Vil one. Have a look at this. There it is. There is the inside of the Cruella de Vil cookies and cream cupcake. Same idea, where it's they took the inside out, filled it filled it with cookies and cream, and then put the inside on the top of it, and then just put a little bit of frosting on top. All right, last treat. And then we'll have tried all 10 treats here for Valentine's Day. This one actually sounds really interesting. It is the Captain Hook Cake chocolate cake with blue and white vanilla buttercream gummy fish, dark chocolate plank, and a white chocolate garnish. I'm just excited to see because this is the only chocolate cake out of all of them. Aside from the flourless one, but the flourless one was not good at all. So I'm excited for this one chocolate cake. Let's see. Let's get a little bit of this chocolate cake going here. Oh, harder to get out. It's also bigger than all the rest. This one is massive. Now we got some frosting, we got some chocolate cake here. It almost tastes like they were trying to mix a chocolate cake and a brownie together. Something strange is going on with this flour or with this chocolate cake. What is it? Why does it taste like that? I can say this. That's not my favorite one, but it's not my least favorite one either. It's kind of like middle of the road for me of all of these. So like I said, if you're coming here, and they told me that they would be available on Valentine's Day, the 14th, too. But I think these are only available 13th and 14th. I would get, if I were doing this again, I would get the Evil Queen Berry Tart. I would get the uh, Scar Peanut Butter one. I would get the, the the Hades one. Not the Gaston one. That one was no good. I would get the Hades Cupcake. And then I would get both the cookies. Those are my final answers. That was, yeah, that was five of them, right? No, one, two, three, four. Four of the ten are my recommendation. So, now I gotta figure out how to get these home. Wow. All right, let me show you guys my, my destruction here. There's the mess that I have made of my tray, all of my different napkins that I've used, because it was messy. Man, but we did it. We tried 10 treats for the Contemporaries Valentine's Day. So there you have it. That was our trip to Magic Kingdom to check on the construction of Tron, kind of have a look around, just kind of go to Magic Kingdom because it's been a while since we've gone. I know we came with Jackson, but that was just more about Jackson than it was about us showing off the park. So it was good to go back in there. Good to see Tron. Good to see all the monorails going by. And then we came over to the Contemporary to try the Valentine's Day treats, all 10 of them. Boy, that was a lot of sweet treats. There were some good ones and there were some bad ones, but then there were some like surprise hits like that Hades one with that pumpkin in there. Man, so delicious. The Evil Queen fruit tart, delicious, delicious. And then of course the Scar one, I really enjoyed because it's peanut butter and I knew I was gonna enjoy it. But all in all, it was fantastic to come out here and try all these different sweet treats and to have a look at Magic Kingdom. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hello, I'm Alison from Wales. And now, now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.